Gilman. Our next witness, Eben Moglen, legal advisor, Diaspora, professor of law, Columbia University, founding director, Software Freedom Law Center. Mr. Moglen. Thank you, Chairman Rush, Ranking Member Whitfield, Mr. Space, other members of the subcommittee. I very much appreciate the invitation to testify, and um, I would like to express my particular gratitude for the committee's strong respect for free speech in the legislative process. Uh, I think it would be useful to begin with a technical clarification. The receipt of advertising on the web is already completely optional. I receive no advertisements in my browser, on my laptop, or on my mobile devices. Any member of the committee or any member of the listening audience on C-SPAN using the Firefox browser could search briefly for Adblock Plus and discover that advertising is already optional to receive entirely, whether it is targeted advertising or non-targeted advertising. The apparent connection made in the course of this discussion between the economics of the advertising business and whether surveillance ought to be uh, uh, authorized or acceptable on the web therefore escapes me. It is already possible for anyone wishing to receive no advertising to do so. Civilization has not collapsed. The uh, distinguished businesses represented here are still in business. And I believe there is no justification for the conclusion that legitimate control of surveillance on the web in the public interest would have any effect on the economics of the situation, since a blanket ban on receipt of advertising by individual consumers is already fully implemented and available at no charge. I also believe that the concept of tracking is perhaps a part of the general mystification in which consumers find themselves. We should, I think, be more clear with consumers who do not have our level of interest in or expertise in these questions if we simply pointed out that the Internet has become a very highly surveilled locale relative to all previous social environments. As Mr. Markey pointed out earlier this afternoon in his questioning, we already have a world in which more than half a billion people live all of their social lives online inside a service provider structure which puts everything they do, everything they say to one another, every photograph they post, every piece of information they distribute about their social lives in one great big database owned by a single for-profit business, which Mr. Markey named. I think we ought, therefore, to conclude that the idea of do not track, which really ought to be described to the public whose interests we are protecting as do not surveil, is a problem more serious and more comprehensive than the problem of addressing behavioral advertising, which is merely one wrinkle in a rapidly changing technical environment, as others have noted. The problem we really face is the problem of identifying the level of surveillance of human beings in their daily activities, the online oxygen that Mr. Markey referred to, how much surveillance is socially tolerable. Never mind whether it is for profit or for the protection of people from wrongdoing of one kind or another, how much are we prepared to abandon our traditional human understanding that what we do when we read, when we speak to our friends, when we go about our social lives is nobody's business except the business of the people with whom we choose to share. Many technologies including technologies being developed by my client base, the client base of nonprofit entities who make software for everyone to share freely and at no cost, many technologies under development would allow us to achieve the enormous benefits of the web we know now, along with many other benefits of the web we will still enjoy with minimal levels of surveillance. That will undoubtedly bring significant economic change, as the web itself has brought economic change during the last 8,000 days, which is the total life of the web. In the next 8,000 days, we can decide whether what we want is all the benefits of social networking and all of the benefits of online culture with comprehensive spying going on all the time or without comprehensive spying going on all the time. As public servants, all of us, I think our role is to arrange to have as little spying as we can. 
I do not think that is an obligation we can trade off against any other because I think it reaches directly to the heart of what constitutional freedom is. In my judgment, what we require is a comprehensive National Privacy Policy Act in which Congress does what Congress does best, set large general societal goals and empower all federal agencies in the conduct of their activities to achieve those goals. The National Environmental Policy Act has, within one generation, done enormous amounts to clean our water, our air, and our environment because of Congress's wisdom in the declaration of broad general principles for the protection of the public interest. Privacy online is the single largest environmental issue in the online world, and it should be addressed with the same degree of seriousness and comprehensiveness with which the physical environment was addressed by Congress one generation ago. Businesses will naturally regard such regulation as burdensome, and that's not a big deal. We must have a clean environment to live in, and we must have a clean online environment that protects our freedom. Our principles acknowledged, there will be plenty of money for everybody to earn. But without our principles acknowledged, we will buy our convenience with our freedom, and that is far too high a price to pay. Thank you for your time. I'm happy to answer your questions.